Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel, ZTube. In this video, I'll be discussing about simple payback period. There is a discounted payback period, which involves time value of money, and there is a simple payback period, which does not involve time value of money. So this video deals with only simple payback period. We are not going to be discussing the discounted payback period method. So simple payback period, also known as the cash payback period or a payback period. So what is simple payback period? Is the time it takes you to recover your investment. So if you have invested in a project and you want to know that how long would it take you to recover your investment, you calculate the payback period. And the sooner you recover your investment, the better it is for the company because you can reinvest that amount that you have generated from the project and reinvest in another project. Right. So as I said earlier, because it's a simple project, simple payback period, it does not involve any discounting. So how do you calculate payback period? And now there's two ways to calculate payback period or a cash payback period. One is the simple way. If you have the same amount of payments or same amount of cash receipts, so cash inflow or outflow, then you can use a formula to calculate the payback period. So if you have annuity, you can divide investment by the annuity and you will get the payback period. However, if you don't have the annuity, then you have to perform year by year computation and you have to manually do this to find out how long would it take you to recover investment in the cases when you have uneven cash payback period. So in, in the event you have the annuities, you can use this formula payback period equals to investment, which is your initial investment divided by the annual net cash inflow. An additional investment, any investment can also be added, right? If you look at this here, it says depreciation deducted in calculating net operating income must be added back. So if you were provided net operating income, because we are calculating cash payback period, so you have to add back depreciation just because depreciation is a non-cash outlay. If you were already given the net cash inflow, then you don't have to add or subtract anything, depreciation, right? But if you were given net operating income, then you have to add back depreciation because this was a non-cash outlay that was deducted when you calculated net operating income. So you have to add back any non-cash outlay, uh, outlay to find out the net cash inflow, okay? Incremental investment should also be considered if you are reinvesting in the project after two years, after three years, or four years, you have to consider that too. So that means you have to add back that amount too. Again, the quicker the recovery period, the more desirable the investment is. If you can, if you have, if you are comparing two projects, one has three years recovery period, the other one has six years recovery period, then you may want to invest in the one which has the shorter pay payback period, which is three years. So here is the example of this simple payback period with the annuity. Z Corporation is considering acquiring new machine for 500,000. So that's your investment. The machine has an estimated useful life of 10 years. The new machine is expected to provide yearly net cash inflow of 90,000. So every year you will be generating $90,000 from this project. Okay, so that's the equal amount of cash receipts that you have. So you can use a formula to calculate this, which is this one investment divided by annual net cash inflow using cash payback period, determine how long would it take you to recover uh, this investment. So the annual investment, the amount of investment is 540,000 divided by 90,000. So this will give you 540 divided by 90 is six. So it will take you six years to recover this investment. Okay, so that's the example of the payback period. Again, if you have multiple, uh, projects to invest in, the faster you are going to uh, receive your investment back, the more desirable the project is because you can reinvest in another project. Okay. Now, what happens when you have uneven cash flows? In this example, Z Corporation is considering acquiring machine for 500,000. The machine, machine has an estimated useful life of six years. The new machine is expected to provide the following yearly net cash inflows. So if you look at this, it has in year 130,000 net cash inflow, year 250,000, so on and so forth. All the cash inflows are, are uneven. Now you need to calculate how long would it take you to recover uh, this investment. 
Now, because your cash flows are uneven, you have to do it manually as I stated earlier. So if you see this table here, here you have a year column and then you have net cash flow, then you have a balance and then you have a recovery. So in year one, you have a cash outflow. So it's negative 500,000. So your balance is left 500,000, okay? Then year one, you generated 130,000. That's coming from your previous table right here 130,000 then 150 then 140 so we are stating this amount here 130 so you subtract that from your balance 500,000 minus 130 now you have 370,000 balance left then you generate another 150,000 dollar in year 2 so you subtract that from the balance from the prior year 370,000 minus 150 now you are left with 220,000 dollar okay then you generated 140,000 so 220,000, the balance from the prior year minus 140, what you have generated this year, will give you $80,000. So now at the end of year three, you have $80,000 balance. Then you have 160,000 that you are receiving. That means all of this amount, 80,000 balance will be paid off in year three plus three years and some months because it's $160,000 is way more than the $80,000 that you are recovering. So how long would it take you? Three years and some months. So how do you find out how many months would it take you? You divide the remaining balance 80,000 by the, by the amount that you are generating um, in the upcoming year, 160,000. So 80,000 over 160,000 is 0. 0.5, which is 0. 0.5 years. And 0. 0.5 years is equal to, because we have 12 months in a year, so 0. 0.5 times 12 is six months. So, which means five years and six months. So you can say that the recovery period is 3.5 years, which is 0.5 plus three, or you can say three years and six months. So that happens when you have uneven cash flows. There's some criticism and usefulness of using the simple payback period. The criticism is that, that it's not a true measure of the profitability of an investment. So if you can see from here, the, from our previous example, it ignores everything that we have accumulated post the recovery of the investment. We, the project was going for six years. We were recovering 145,000 in year six and 35,000 in year five. However, um, if you look at the calculation here, at 3.5 years, we stop because that's what we were interested in to find out that how long would it take you to recover the investment, 3.5 years. So it ignores all the cash flows after the payback period. So it, it is not a measure of a profitability of an investment. It just uh, tells you that how long would it take you to recover the investment. It also ignores time value of money when you are using the simple payback period. If you're using discounted, then that's a different story. For simple payback period, uh, that's a criticism. Um, also, the shorter period does not always mean the project is more desirable. So in previous example we have is that the project is recovering the investment in 3.5 years, right? It may last four years, it may last five years or six years. And that doesn't mean it's more desirable because the project which, is, which has a, a little bit longer um, payback period, for example, project B has a payback period of four years, may last eight years and gives you a more profitability than this project. So then which project is more desirable? Now, because it ignores all the cash flow occurs after the payback period, it's hard to determine. So that's the disadvantage of using a payback period. However, it's useful when you want to identify that which projects fall in your ballpark range. So both for screening decisions and for preference decision, you can use payback period. Uh, if you want to screen out the project that uh, uh, cannot recover your investment within five years, then you can all screen out all the projects that are giving your investment back in six years, seven years, eight years, and only consider those projects to be viable that are giving your investment back within five years. So you can use it as a screening decision. Then you can also use that as a ranking tool uh, if you want to decide that which project you want to invest and you if you decide to invest in a project that gives you the faster recovery if some project give you two years recovery compared to 2.5 years or three years then you that would be your preference right so it can be used for your preference decision as well as uh, the screening tool um, it is also useful for the companies that are cash poor because they are the one who need their cash back as soon as possible if they are cash short then they want their cash back. So for them, 
cash payback period is a good good method to use. Also for industries where products are obsolete, such as perishable goods or the technology companies where um, their products don't last as long, and then they want to recover their investment as soon as possible. So for them, it's good to use the payback period so they, they know that they are recovering their investment faster. That completes the cash payback period. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.